Now in this video we're going to be making a canopy. I've got to the stage in the build of this Ivanti Patterns plane from 1974 that I need to have a canopy. And so we're going to be making a canopy today out of a pop bottle. And I've got a, a number of pop bottles here that we're going to be using. And we're going to be using this balsa wood plug that I made. I made this quite a while ago for a previous Avanti patterns plane that I gave to a, a good friend. And I miss that plane so much that I'm building a new one, but I've still got the plug from the old one. Plugs are easy enough to make, and we're going to be molding the bottle around this plug to get a canopy. Now, what we're going to need is we're going to need a heat gun, a glove, and a good pair of pliers. And we're going to be needing a supply, two or three pop bottles. Always good to practice on some. But pop bottles aren't all equal. And we'll have a quick look at the selection of a bottle, because bottle selection is really, really important. Right, well, bottles like this will shrink really nicely around the former once we apply some heat. And that heat is going to be in the form of this heat gun. Now, as I said, all pop bottles aren't the same. We can see these two bottles here are a slightly misty, a smoky kind of appearance. We can see this bottle here, which is actually still a little bit damp inside, is clearer. I, I don't know whether that, if I just move out of the way, whether that shows up, but bottles can come in different colours and shades. So we need to select what we want. I've seen some nice blue ones recently, which would make an, a nice canopy. Also, and one of the most important things, is when you go to buy your pot bottle, you need to look at three things. The first one is the glue. We can see the glue from where the label was held on, coming down here. Now, we need to avoid that when we're making the canopy. So when we've got our plug and we slide it into the pot bottle, which we'll do in a minute, that glue wants to be on the underside because we don't want it on the canopy. We can't get that off, it's, it's so we need to avoid it. The other thing that we need to look at is the bottle seams. And I, I think that probably shows up. There's a seam there which we really don't want to get on the visible part of the canopy, the top of the canopy. So again, that wants to go on the underside or around the side. And the final thing of the three is there is a date stamp there etched into the bottle. So ideally we want to have the sticky, the seam and the date stamp all in the same kind of area of the bottle. And unfortunately with this bottle and this bottle, which are the same brand of, of fizzy drink, we've got them spread around. We've got the sticky there, we've got the, um, we've got the seam there, and we've got the, uh, the, the date stamp there. So really there isn't enough between that seam and the sticky to get our canopy out. And, and we've got the date stamp there. So these are good for practicing and I will practice with one of these first. But this bottle here, and I selected this quite carefully. <laughs> it's a bit strange when you get the supermarket and you start inspecting the bottles before you buy them. But we've got the sticky, we've got the seam close by, and we've got the date stamp right next to the seam there. So we've got all three down that section. So we can turn it over and we can slip our mould in and form the canopy with this top section forming a nice clean canopy. Now we've got some lines here. Some bottles are a lot more pronounced in the lines than others. These will show up when we've shrunk the bottle, but they will look like almost like detail around and, and I don't mind that because I think it just adds to the canopy rather than it being just completely sort of monotone. So I think this will make us a nice canopy. I've just noticed there's a little bit of a scuff on there which hopefully won't show up 
when we've got the final canopy done. If we do, I'll probably go and buy another bottle and do another one. But it's more about the process really today. So what we're going to do is we're going to use one of these bottles and we're going to cut off the bottom. Now, this will only just fit in there to give us a canopy. So we need to be as conservative as possible and cut off as little as possible to, uh, to get this uh, uh, former into the bottle. So I'm just going to stick a knife in, if I can do that without losing a finger. There we go. And I'm just going to go around and take off the, uh, the bottom of the bottle. Now, we need to be really smart in doing this if we can and, uh, and try to minimise the amount we take off. Actually, I should just mention at this stage, having cut the bottom off, we've got the, the dimples just sticking down a little bit from where the bottom was shaped. And we need to be really careful when we're sliding our former in that these don't dig into the soft balsa. And I didn't want to cut it any, um, uh, take more off because it would um, make the bottle shorter. And as I said earlier, we need as much as we can get on, uh, on this bottle, as much length as we can get. Now we've got that in there and that looks a, a pretty good fit. So we've got the sticky here. Let's avoid the sticky, even though we're gonna get the seam and the date stamp. So I'm gonna put that on a towel just to stop it sliding and, uh, and scuffing it. I know this is a test one, but we should still do it as a real one. Now we could shrink it like that, but there's a lot of shrinkage needed to get that to fit. So what we need to do is we need to have some bits of wood and we need to pack this former tightly in here so it's pressing up against the top of the bottle here. So what I'm going to do, I think this piece of wood is probably too big, but for starters we'll get this in. Okay, we've got our plug jammed in the bottle now. It's nice and tight here. So we're ready to start shrinking this, but we need to be careful of the mouth of the bottle. That needs pulling down so it ends up below the front of the canopy, so it's nice and clear of that. So we'll heat it up and we'll pull it down with a pair of pliers when it's nice and soft. We also need to be careful at the back here because if we start shrinking this, it's surprising how much these bottles will shrink and it will shrink back and it won't be long enough to go uh, the, around the whole of the, uh, the former. So what we need to do is we need to hold it here with the pliers and we need to pull this round as we shrink it and form it around this back edge first so it grips that back edge and doesn't end up shrinking that way. So this is one of these jobs where you need three hands. So I'm going to use a piece of uh, uh, line like this and I'm going to wrap that around something down here on my bench and I'm just going to put that over the mouth of a bottle like this so that when I'm working on this with the hot air gun it's not lifting up because if I try doing it like this it's just going to start moving around. So that will give me just a little bit more um, uh, it'll make the bottle and the former a lot more steady and, uh, and easier to work with, hopefully. Uh, we'll see. So I will get this tied up and then we will uh, we'll start to shrink the bottle and see how we get on. So we'll grip it with the pliers. We, we have to be careful not to get this too hot or it'll go white and bubble. There, you can see that now has just pulled around there, hopefully. I'll zoom the camera in just a little bit, but <laughs> I've just got to wait for that to cool down. 
it will spring back a little bit. Well I just started editing the, the film I did yesterday of me making this canopy and for some reason I, I haven't got the bit of me doing the back. Whether I didn't press record or I lost it, I don't know, probably didn't press record. So I'm going to do just this back section now and I'm going to slot it in. So if the film looks a little bit different at this point, that's why. But I just wanted the whole sequence for continuity. So I'll zoom the camera on this now and then we'll get this back section done. Well as I think I said yesterday it's important to do this back section first and to shrink it down and to hold it firm so it doesn't pull off as we shrink this bit. So first off I'm going to shrink the underside and just pull it down a little bit. Okay, now we're going to pull down the top. And we're pulling the sides. And we'll pull this bit down again. And now we will do this other side. And if we just get a grip of that. There we go. Now at this stage we've got some quite big wrinkles around here and I'm just going to get a piece of wood to hold onto there. Okay so what we can do is we can just heat this up and push that down to get it nice and firm along that back edge. Just pull these sides round a little bit now and then we're done for the moment. Okay, so now we've got that back edge pulled around there. We will revisit this probably when we shrink this centre section, but now we'll get on with the front. Okay, so got the screw in, holding that back end nice and secure. Now the first thing I'm going to do, rather than attack the top, I'm going to go on the underside, shrink this, and hopefully pull the whole bottle down towards the bottom. So we'll just... I don't want to do it too close around that front edge just yet. But we can see already how that's pulled down the bottle on the front there. And we'll do, give it a little bit more. Uh, yeah, just a little bit more. Okay, now we can see that the mouth of the bottle, hopefully you can see, is almost below the level of the, the, the canopy edge there. It's just pulled it down by heating that underneath. Still looking a bit wrinkled and uh, a bit of a mess on the top, but hopefully we'll manage to, uh, to get that right. But this is our test bottle, so if we don't, <laughs> we've got some more. So uh, what I'm going to do now is just work on getting these wrinkles out. And as this softens, I'm going to pull this front down. And I think, shall I do it with a glove or with the pliers? I think. I think I'll probably do it with the glove. It gives me a little bit more dexterity. Now that is shrinking lovely and that front there has pulled right down over the front of that canopy and it just needs a little bit more to go. Now unfortunately that bit of wood 
there is just stopping stopping me pulling that down so I'm just going to uh, use a screwdriver I think and just tap that bit of wood back right well that is really firm in there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat up the front of the bottle and I'm going to just push down with a piece of wood because I can't uh, I can't knock that piece of wood back There we go. Now, our canopy is almost there. And what we need to do now is we just need to get rid of these wrinkles in the side here. But we need to be really mindful of this back edge here. It is a bit longer than we need, but not a lot. We haven't got a lot to play with there. So I need to probably hold that and just make sure that, see if I can stop that from pulling round. Okay, there we have a finished canopy. Now there's a few little wrinkles along this back edge but I'm going to cut this out of the bottle and we'll see what it looks like. But you can see that looks pretty smooth and actually those lines that have gone round have more or less disappeared, the, the ones that were part of the, uh, the bottle design. So, but that is nice and tight against that plug. So, I'll cut that out and we'll have a look. Now, this is really easy to cut out but we need to be careful that we don't damage our plug so I'm just going to slip a scalpel in above the plug like that and I'm just going to slide it around the edge and uh, I can trim it up with a pair of scissors afterwards. So there we have our mould and where's my scissors? Because of the neck of the bottle here it gets quite uh, gets quite thick at that point. So now I will go around and just trim this up neatly. Obviously when we make our plug we need to make sure that the plug has enough overlap on the fuselage to, uh, to be secured to the, uh, to the fuselage. And this will need trimming around the front edge probably just so it copes with the, the curved nature of the fuselage. But it's good to do a test piece like this with a bottle that isn't ideal and then hopefully we will know everything that we need to know when we, uh, when we come to do that top, top copy. Right, so now we have quite a nice canopy that fits on there quite well, it needs a little bit of trimming up. It needs trimming around the front here. It probably needs a quarter of an inch coming off the front. And I'll do this just roughly so we can see what it looks like. But we have to remember this, this is just our, uh, our practice. So if it's not perfect, it's not the end of the world. But um, it will give us an idea practicing like this, how much we need to remove to get this to fit properly. There we go. Now, does that sit down enough? No, that still needs a little bit more off. It's still lifting up a little bit too high. So I'll trim this again. Okay, I've trimmed some more off now. And that there now is almost right. I think it still probably wants a little bit more off. But it needs to, the canopy really needs to follow the shape of the turtle neck, which it's doing. So I think that is looking pretty good. And that, this now, this canopy, which is our practice one, will give us a good, 
um, template for when we've done our final shrinking of the canopy of this uh, this good bottle here and it'll it will show us where to cut so we can make sure we get the cut right first time and this back edge obviously still needs trimming so what I'm going to do now is I'll just trim this but I will get a top copy of the canopy done using that nice bottle and uh, we'll come back and have a look at it when it's finished. Right, I'm doing my top copy now and I thought I would just, I wasn't going to film this but I thought I would just show you what I've done. I, I've got the bottle packed in as before but rather than pulling these sides round first I did the top section. I pulled that down and shrunk it round and then did the sides here and I've, I've got a much cleaner back edge here. It's been a while since I've done this so it's always good to have a bit of a practice on, a, on a, a bottle that you don't care about but that's a lot nicer there now and of course I shrunk the underside first as I did before so what I'm going to do now is shrink the underside here and pull this front down and I think that is nice and secure now on that back end I keep thinking I won't show you any more until I've actually got this one finished but this has just shrunk on absolutely lovely now and that is going to produce a really nice canopy so I'm going to get this cut out but I just wanted to show you how how well that shrunk around that uh, that former with no wrinkles or anything you can see those lines in the uh, from the actual bottle but like I said I think they kind of add to the the uh, the canopy really and just make it look a little bit uh, a bit like they should be there really so I'll get this cut out now and we will get it fitted Right, we've now got a top copy canopy that I am really pleased with. I think that's looking really good. It will need a little bit of fine trimming and fitting and maybe a little bit off the back here when we finally come to fit this when we've got every, all the covering done and, and we're finishing it off. But we've got the canopy there ready to go now and I am really, really pleased with it. Canopies can be a little bit of an issue when you're scratch building or you're building from plans like this because the canopies, uh, I mean these plans were from 1974 so the canopy, you can't get the canopy for this, I'm sure you can't but it's great if we can use plugs and plastic bottles to make our own canopies it really is quite liberating and we can get a vacuum former and make them probably uh, better than this but there's quite a lot of effort and investment involved in vacuum forming so to be able to make one out of a fizzy drinks bottle which I think looks brilliant then you know it's a win-win situation isn't it so anyway I hope you found this useful and interesting and um, I hope it's inspired you to uh, to make some of these planes that we see on plans that we think, oh yeah, but where would I get the canopy from? So anyway, now you know. Thanks very much for watching.